Welcome. It's great to have you here. So many good friends in all, all kinds of walks of life. This is, this, is an, this is an unusual book that refers to Citizens Climate Lobby. The author of this book, Sam, Sam Daly Harris, was, one, was a person who, whose expertise in working with Congress has allowed Citizens Climate Lobby to become so successful uh, in working, building our relationships with Congress. And as you probably all know, we now have an act before Congress. It's before the House now. We want it before the Senate. It's called the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. And, uh, and we're very pleased to have, have that there after all our, our work. So now I'm going to introduce one of the other Peters in, in this group. <laughs> uh, Peter Munro is from Portland. He's, uh, he's impressed us all in his ability to make climate a fun topic in all kinds of ways <laughs> and to illustrate the costs of climate change. And I'm going to leave it up to you from then on. Come on. Okay. Okay. Can you hear? Can you hear yeah, that? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, so this is the world premiere of climate change theory as ba bathtub as climate change theory. Okay. <laughs> um, but first, I have to set the groundwork a, a little bit. Um, by saying that uh, the United States emits a trillion pounds of carbon dioxide every month, more than a trillion pounds. Just so we have a scale, we have a scale of understanding of what the problem is. <clears throat> and a trillion, um, if you counted a pound every second, it would take 16 to 17 minutes to count to 1,000. Then, if you counted to a million, it would take, uh, if I recall correctly, 11 and a half days to get to a million. And every second, you're counting one pound, two pounds, three pounds, four pounds. To count to a billion, to get to the next order, would take three and a half years of seconds. Every second, you'd be counting a pound. A billion pounds would take three and a half years. It turns out that to count to a trillion would take 31,000 years. Wow. Okay, you, you just have to, you, that's the only way I've been able so far. <clears throat> I'll give another example. So we think of when Mount St. Helens blew up, it emitted a huge amount of material and, get, you know, soot and particles and so forth. In fact, it was 520 million pounds in two hours it took the mountain to blow up, blow into the air, and 250 miles away in Spokane, Washington, the day turned to night because there was so much material in the air, 520 million pounds. <clears throat> we in the United States, in our automobiles and our factories and our electric generating plants, <clears throat> emit 520 million pounds every 18 minutes. Oh, wow. oh my God. So in a year, we uh, send into the atmosphere, unfortunately it's invisible, so we don't actually, it doesn't blot out the sun. Uh, if it were particulate matter, we wouldn't be able to see the sun ever. We, we throw into the air 30,000 Mount St. Helens every year. Okay? So you begin to see that it, what we're talking about here is just the biggest imaginable thing. I'm going to give you the second key piece to understanding the scale of the problem. Here we have the Earth. You can tell it's the, uh, it must be the Kobe Bryant version of the Earth. Um, <laughs> um, if this were the Earth, and uh, here we are over here, North America, if this were the Earth, I'm going to ask you, oops, I think the uh, my speaker went off, is that right? Yeah. I don't yeah, hear the so speaker. Um, it, maybe it's it's maybe a it loose wire or something. It, do, I, do I hit the plus thing on it? No, if it doesn't work, then... Okay. All right. I will speak up. 
I'm going to ask you, this is a short quiz. So if this is the Earth, and if the livable atmosphere is 10 miles deep or high, you know, clouds go up 10 miles, more or less, we can breathe about five miles above the Earth, because that would be Mount, Mount Everest. I'm going to allow you to say you could breathe on the top of Mount Everest. <laughs> so how thick do you think the atmosphere is around the Earth? Do you think it's, um, I'll give you three options. It's either uh, less than half an inch, or it's roughly an inch or roughly two inches? Less than half. Less than half. Okay. Less than half. How many think it's less than half? Um, okay, well, I'll keep going. Keep your hands up. How many think it's less than a quarter of an inch? How many think it's less than a tenth of an inch? How about less than a hundredth of an inch? How about about a thousandth of an inch? On that scale. See the skim of water on that planet? <laughs> That's the atmosphere. Wow. And into that atmosphere, it's less than a thousand, it's about a thousandth of an inch. Okay? 0 0.001 inch. I mean, a hair is something like a, a hundredth of an inch or so. Okay, into that, we're pumping 30,000 Mount St. Helens every year. And you think we can't have an impact on the, on the planet? And that's just the United States. And that's just the United States. And we're not the leading uh, producer of carbon dioxide anymore. Historically, we are. But uh, at the moment, China is out, uh, out distance us. But it begins to give you a sense of we have a very thin skin on this planet on which we can survive. And into that, we are pumping something which is radically altering this skim coat of livability. Okay. So that's why this is such a huge deal. And that's why we have to deal with it quickly. Now I'm going to try to change this into a, a tub size exercise. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> you may have seen it before. Here's the, here's the up and down of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere over the last 800,000 years, this little black jagged line along the bottom of the tub. And here's where we've gone in the last 200 years, okay? Straight up. So here's the, here's the uh, let's see. So here's the, uh, here's the trillion pounds a month. Oh, it knocked Mickey Mouse over already. <laughs> so people think they have seafront property. They've got a couple of houses here right on the seafront. Only suddenly the storms are worse, and so the, the, the waves are hitting the houses. So we need to adapt. So that's the first thing. We start spending money on adaptation. <laughs> we uh, lift the houses up. So you've been to Florida, you've seen the houses on stilts, right? If you're in Portland, we had a project where they were going to raise Somerset Street, a thousand feet of Somerset Street, to build a $60 million complex with huge buildings and so forth. I formed a group to fight that, by the way. Um, oh, more adaptation. Oh, and now suddenly the carbon dioxide, this is the carbon dioxide coming in, it's full. And now it's over full. And what's it doing? It's, it's, it's ruining things that are below sea level, like the Ninth Ward in New Orleans or the low areas around Houston. Those we, we have to repair. That's called restoration. And this is costing money, huge amounts of money. <laughs> <laughs> These are billion dollar bills. Okay? We are spending billions, literally billions. <laughs> Senator Collins had the General Accounting Office figure out how much it cost in 2017 for Hurricanes Maria, Ivan, and Harvey. $300 billion. This is only $150 billion. Okay? Every year we could be spending that kind of money. And what do you get for it? You get a house on stilts. You, get, you rebuild what you had before. And this is all because we didn't do anything. We didn't act in time. Okay. What we want to do is turn off, this is the, the problem, which is the carbon emissions. We want to turn these off. So we, we got some renewable, renewable portfolio standards. So we're going to have more clean energy. And we applied that wrench to try to replace that one. And nothing happened. Our emissions stayed the same. Then we applied, oh, we're going to have higher mileage with our cars. So oh, that'll do it. Oh, yeah. Our emissions are actually going up now, despite the application of higher car standards. No, what we need is the energy innovation and carbon dividend. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Now, if you apply something like that to a scrub like this, you can actually have an impact. <laughs> Only the BICDA can you stop the emission. And we have to do that. We also have to do other things. We have to extract some water from some carbon dioxide from the atmosphere because we have too much, right? But it's no good if we're still pouring a trillion pounds a month in there. So those are the four different things that we have to address for carbon change, for climate change. We have to mitigate, actually we have to eliminate carbon emissions with the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. We have to sequestrate or extract, uh, so it's sequestration is the removal of carbon from the atmosphere that's already in it. And that can be done by farming or with technology or whatever. We also need to adapt, we need to raise our cities and waterfronts, or we need to make them more resilient, we need to put the utilities upstairs or whatever, and <clears throat> we need to restore, we need restoration. So those are the four things, adaptation, mitigation, sequestration, and restoration. And all of them are going to cost some kind of money, but only the Energy and Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act, <laughs> whoop, where am I? <laughs> The good news is this money is paid for by the fossil fuel companies and it goes to you. These are thousand dollar bills and in the fourth year, in the fourth year after this, this is implemented, every American will get a one thousand dollar check for the year. So it will be broken into monthly checks so you'll get a, a little bit over a hundred dollars a month paid for by Murray Cole and Exxon and coming directly to you. And if you have children under 18, they'll get half. If you've got two children under 18, you get a second thousand dollar check. Okay? So that's the deal. You can either waste a lot of, you can waste billions trying to repair things that we didn't fix, or you can start to fix the problem and get money for doing so. Thank you. That's what we call a laser talk. <laughs>